Hi, welcome to Box on the Box Rock and Celluloid, Bot Brack for short, so I've got a first for you, I'm going to do a live review. So yesterday I drove down to Leeds to catch Uriah Heap, Saxon and Judas Priest at the Leeds First Direct Arena, first time at that venue, um, not the first time obviously seeing any of those bands, so I'm big fans of them all. Quite interesting, you know, the structure of this show, a celebration of different eras of metal really, Uriah Heap, one of the innovators, um, obviously more of a heavy rock band at the time with a track like Gypsy which they played firmly establishing like heavy sort of a riff and block chords with the uh, Hammond organ that would uh, inspire a lot of bands and obviously the great David Byron as well who with his high screams influencing uh, Biff Byford and a certain Rob Halford then of course uh, you got Jesus Priest and the next evolution of metal after Heap, Sab Sabbath Purple um, sort of taking in different directions and introducing the twin guitars instead of having a keyboard. And then Saxon, the new Wobben band, although uh, Biff's the same age as Rob, you know, finding their feet in 79, 80, um, uh, and um, been part of that movement. Um, so the first direct arena was pretty cool. It's kind of in a horseshoe shape. So, uh, well, it's, it's technically you shouldn't get a bad view. Um, it was seated down the front, which I didn't agree with. Apparently they pulled the seats further back for Maiden. Um, the capacity of this venue is about 13,700 or something, I think. Uh, so uh, it was a slightly reduced size um, with having more seating than standing, but it was very, very well attended, this gig. Um, when you looked up right up into the rafters, there was a lot of seats filled. So I feel it's a bit of a, a sort of a bit of a metal revival on again. I think the, the, the bands have kind of worked out, you know, they're not going to sell CDs anymore. Um, it's about streaming, it's about social media, it's about keeping content going and letting you know you're out there. Albums are a way to get good reviews, uh, create content, uh, and then, uh, you know, book a good tour. Uh, Biff actually thanked Live Nation when he was on stage uh, for putting it together, and he said, oh, I'd love to watch this, I bet it's fucking brilliant, which is well funny. So um, let's uh, go through the review. So I was in a block, well, I thought I was in, we'll cover that, I was in block... Um, uh, D, I think 106, well 107, I think it was 106, but we made a mistake, we'll come to that. So Uriah Heap came on, 6.40 sharp, they only did 35 minutes, the sound took a while to sort out and was never totally great. When I went in, they are cavernous these places and as good as the Leeds First Direct is, um, you're never going to get the sound you can in a small, like a City Hall or Manchester Apollo, like in the classic venues. But I had a big drum rise, a nice backdrop. Um, nice infills, you know, over the amps. Uh, Phil, um, oh, Christ, the keyboard player. It'll come to me. He was sort of, a, had, a, had a cool little station. So the setup on stage was good, you know, clearly, you know, the Uriah Heap, they're not going to get shortchanged with some crap. Um, there was obviously a lot of respect between the bands. So Heap did a solid set as they could. Obviously, they did the classics Gypsy and Easy Living. Uh, Gypsy, that's a track they've played every single time. Uh, they opened uh, with... Um, Somebody Save Me Tonight off the uh, new uh, album, excellent, and did Hurricane and Graced by, Graced by Heaven off um, uh, the previous album. Uh, and then we got Rainbow Demon, which was top, uh, and Free and Easy, I think that's off Innocent Victim, have been playing that as a kind of fast and furious number. Um, so, you know, a solid set, it's just, just as we're getting their striding and the sound was getting sorted, they had to go. Um, so, there's a kind of part of me although we'll come to it, if, if Saxon maybe could have gone, look, you know, we'll, we'll knock a song or two. And Pete could have gone The Wizard and still like Bird of Prey or something shorter, you know. Um, but a good, good solid set, I think. A lot of people were surprised. They don't know him hearing good reports. You know, people, you know, you're right, he'd been around so long, they probably don't realise how good they are as a live band. They're very good. Uh, and they did themselves no harm at all with this. Um, you know, so I'd give their set, I'd give their performance and set a 7 out of 10. Um, I would give it more if it was a longer set and the sound could sort it. Next up was Saxon, uh, so they opened up the hand to the prophecy with a Brian Blessed talking, and this was a real masterstroke. And then they came on, there was like red, full, red sort of smoke, and they did the title track of Hellfire and Damnation. This was a superb album, the track's really good. And what was clever about it, really, this chorus is it, it really easy to remember the instant you hear it, so people were singing along already. Biff, when he came on, he said, Make some fucking noise, you know. Brilliant, and then he was sort of playing up the fact it's a home gig leads, they're a Yorkshire band. Um, really good. Then they went into, uh, oh, I'm, I'm trying to remember, it was a motorcycle man, brilliant. It's a brilliant one two punch. And they did Sacrifice. Now, originally when I read about this in the set list, I was like, oh, do you have to do that one? But in actual fact, 
its brutalness, its heaviness fit the bill just perfectly. Then we've got, we've got a, a three other tracks off the new album, Madame Guillotine, uh, something in Roswell, and Fire and Steel, of course, doing Fire and Steel about Sheffield, another Yorkshire town, proud industrial town, just move that a bit. Um, so this was really good. They had a sort of, um, you know, you could pick a track. Um, I noticed on the previous gig, Dallas 1pm one, but what happened here, everyone was sat down, some people were standing, and Biff just said, you know, get on your feet, and he, he did, he eventually got the whole arena up on their feet, and... This is something special that happens at gigs sometimes. The, the audience responds to the band, the band responds to the audience. It's a, a chemistry happens between the audience and band, and that's when the great gigs happen. You know, a band can play out of the skin, but the audience isn't responsive, the band won't feel that, and vice versa. Um, you know, if the audience is getting into it, they feel the band's not giving enough, you know. So superb. Um, and then just the icing on the cake, Paul Quinn came on for the last two encores, obviously retired from the band a while ago. He started gigging, doing things. They did Princess of the Night and Denim and Leather. It was great. Someone bought his pedal board on. It was really good. Uh, he shook hands with Brian Tatler. He was excellent. That's the other point I should make. You know, Brian Tatler just fit like a glove. He had a good stance on stage. And I think it's been a masterstroke by Saxon getting him in. Um, Tatler played. He took his solo as well. He was melodic. Um, uh, and because he's from that era of new album, it just feels kind of right. And he's the same age as those guys. You know, always the bridesmaid. Well, not if you've got his Am I Real royalties, but now he's kind of the bride, you know. Diamond had a sort of band who would typically do smaller venue supports, but not in a big situation like this. And if we're at a festival, it'll be on earlier in the day. Saxon will go on later, so excellent. I'll give the Saxon a 9 out of 10, it was superb. So at this point, I went back to our seats because we'd been just down the front chatting, and we turned out some people in our seats. What are you doing in our seats? We'd been in the wrong seats. So we had to move along. Now I had an obscured view, and this was a vibe killer. Plus, we were sat um, behind some guys, and I think one of them was had a disability. Uh, is disabled, so you know they, they've had a bit of a heave over the people who've been in our seats, uh, so we couldn't stand up. And it is cool. I'm totally, um, you know, fine with that. People, everyone's got to get a good view. So we just kind of sat down and watched the priest, but it was kind of at the side a bit. I was kind of seeing Ian Hill, Andy Sneakmore, as you know, Richie Fortner likes to go right over the end. Sometimes I wish he'd come in a bit more, so we couldn't see him. But the priest production was excellent. The opening was cool. The kind of behind a, uh, a banner, and then they're all on this drum, drum riser, and they came out and did Panic Attack. Um, then they kind of, uh, you know, hit us hard with, you've got nothing coming, breaking the law. A um, couple of deeper cuts, Love Bites was played off the Defender's Arm, and of course the classic Saints in Hell off Stained Class. Then you've got your Painkiller, you're living after midnight, you're hellbent for leather. The usual ones. Uh, they played Trial by Fire off Invincible Shield Line, which I didn't think worked. I think they could have put to another track. I do like the song. Uh, but the title track was exceptional, and Richie Faulkner and Andy Sneep's guitars on that were absolutely superb. So what about the, the gig, you know, if I'd been in a better seat for Priest, I, uh, I would have had that more envelope and experience. Um, the the projections and infographics and everything were brilliant, especially in Saints in Hell, which had loads of red uh, background and loads of nuns in black, which is top. But because it was at the side and there was issues with the sound, it did kind of take us out of the experience a bit. At one point, Ian Hill's bass went really loud, which is quite strange because, you know, we don't often hear that. He's great, though. Um, but, um, uh, you know, I think uh, Rob, Rob sounded pretty good. Obviously, he's, he's struggling with some notes these days, but he's 72. Um, he does insist on going off for costume changes, uh, like a metal chair, which sometimes I just wish he'd wear something fairly sensible and just stay out the front. And he didn't really talk much to the crowd. Uh, Bernie Shaw, very affable. And, of course, Biff really got the crowd going. His pattern. Biff doesn't move around a lot, but he... It just creates that communion, you know, Saxon are a working band, um, very much uh, a working man's, working woman's band, and you feel that kinship there. Um, Faulkner and Sneep, well, Faulkner, we know he's a master, master player. Um, Sneep, I've got to say, I think did a, a really good job, obviously, when he was kind of thrown in the deep end, uh, when Glenn uh, retired from touring, he looked a bit out of sorts, but he's obviously grown into his role. Uh, he looked good on stage, he'd grown his hair a bit. I like the way he kind of moved back to play of Ian Hill and he kind of worked the stage in that kind of classic priest manner, which sometimes Faulkner doesn't do as much. Um, and some cool bits where they came together for the harmonies. You know, it is sometimes missing that Clay K. Glenn dynamic when the two guitars come together. But Sneep did about seven or eight solos. Um, he took them well. Um, you know, he doesn't have the tone of phrasing of, um, you know, Tipton or Faulkner. Maybe Downing for that matter, but he, he solid did a job. It's interesting for guitarists to watch as well. Uh, Richie Fortner does a kind of double downstroke, upstroke on Painkiller, but Sneak being a thrasher, he played it all with downstrokes, so very manly of him. 
Uh, yeah, uh, Victim of Changes, obviously classic. They did that. Fault. They did a great solo on that. I just checked the time right, uh, and um, it was a bit, you know really good whammies. I think overall, Priest got put on a good show. I think some some of the song choices, um, you know, I wouldn't have done Love Bites. Um, I, I would have done something else. And maybe, maybe I wouldn't have opened with Panic Attack. And maybe I'd done something different to Trial by Fire. They did Lightning Strike as well, off and Firepower. Um, so I'll give the priest, you know, I think I'll give it a seven and a half out of ten. I think, I think Saxon stole the show a bit. Um, the last few times I've seen Priest, they always put on a good show. But the last time I saw him when I was like, fucking hell, it was awesome for me, was at the Birmingham NEC hometown gig in 2009. It was right down the front. But there's lots of patter out there about Priest at the moment. It's new Priest album time. There's lots of debate which album's better. A priest this, a priest that, you miss KK Glenn, or is Faulkner awesome, the saviour, I don't know, uh, answer but on a postcard. But um, anyway, that's my review of the gig. Um, if you have got tickets, look forward to the show, it's really good, um, uh, and I would recommend getting tickets. This is a really good package. I think for 80 quid, although we're all paying a lot for uh, gigs now, it is good value. You are getting three exceptional bands with exceptional heritage. Cheers, thanks very much.